think... Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! talking to you or listening to you talk to me um, about backdrops of well, none of us actually know anything. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Where we just sort of grope around in the darkness. But some events, of course, are so tumultuous that it can be quite comforting just to converse. I'm still in that zone myself. I suspect you probably are as well. Um, I would start by talking about these intelligence leaks and, and I stress that the hardest word sometimes the, the, the bigger the story the harder it is ever to just say I don't know I just don't get it I'm beginning to wonder whether in recent years we've all become so obsessed with the hot take that it's made a mockery of truth and, and, and facts you know I don't just mean the fake news uh, phenomenon I mean the sense that we all feel because possibly because of social media so we're constantly in the shop window, we're constant, we've all got a soapbox, we've all got a loud hailer. You have to have a, a, a really strong view on absolutely everything. It used to just be confined to idiots like me doing jobs like this, <laughs> the, the, the necessity of having a really strong view on everything. But we seem to be living increasingly in a world where we feel compelled to have really hot takes, really strong views on everything from sandwich fillings to geopolitical relations. And... And I've really struggled this morning to, to try to work out the... I think the phrase is, is cui bono, isn't it? C-U-I-B-O, new word B-O-N-O, -O, who benefits or something like that. On the fact that American intelligence agents, or, or the intelligence community, they call it in the States, the IC, has given to American journalists pictures and information that they've received from the British police and which the British police wish they hadn't shared. Police investigating the Manchester Arena bomb attack have stopped sharing information with US officials after leaks to the media. The BBC has been told UK investigators were outraged when photographs appearing to show debris from the attack appeared in the latest edition of the New York Times. Our security correspondent Frank Gardner is here. Also Lee Doddridge, a former officer at the National Counterterrorism Security Office, joins us live from Cardiff. And we're also joined by Ben Owen, a former MI5 officer in Manchester. Frank, first of all, is this completely unprecedented? Um, no, it's not. US, um, the US sort of beltway around Washington is notoriously leaky, and likewise in New York, it's always far easier to get what should be closely held, sometimes almost classified information out of the US than it is out of the UK. So the security is much better, actually, in London, in Whitehall. And it's frustrating because, you know, as a journalist, I will have editors in the past saying, well, why aren't you getting this stuff, you know, because the US is leaky. But in this particular case, this is actually really dangerous. Mm -hmm. This is an ongoing operation where, you know, let's not beat around the bush. They are hunting for a bomb factory. They're hunting for a guy who has probably c produced or possibly produced more devices um, like the one that was used in Manchester. They are in a race against time to find that. The last thing they want is the name leaked out so that people can be warned um, and uh, possibly try and escape. And now the whole methodology of this thing is being laid out there and it's incredibly disrespectful to mm -hmm. the families of the victims. Uh, Lee Doddridge, what impact do you think this leak will have? Well, for one, it's, it's an um, unwarranted distraction from the inquiry. You know, we need to be focused, as Frank said then, on finding whoever produced the device and whether there's any more out there. Um, we don't need the distraction of then having these issues with our American counterparts. You know, when we share intelligence through the Five Eyes Network, for argument's sake, you know, we're the originators, we're the owners of that intelligence, and it's there to help them, not for them to abuse um, and disseminate from there. And it, as Frank quite rightly said, um, it is a very leaky system in America, and I think it's the right decision now to, to stop any sharing of intelligence. And that may damage moving forward. Ben Owen, who actually gets to make the call on what intelligence is shared? Because it sounds like this decision has come directly from Greater Manchester Police. You might think that it, a decision like that would be taken at a higher level. 
Yeah, of course. It's always looked at on a case by case basis. But if the intelligence, as Liam Frank have said, if the intelligence is key to an investigation that keeps uh, citizens of the Five Eyes community and sometimes wider safe, then that information will be shared. Um, I can think of a similar case back in 2006, the airline plot Operation Overt, which was the um, investigation into trying to thwart the network, East London networking, blowing up uh, aircraft over American airspace. Now, if we look back at that, this was a British investigation. We were sharing lots and lots of key information with the American intelligence agencies. Now, they wanted us to, uh, you know, uh, finish this operation, arrest everyone, because, of course, it was over American airspace, and that's where the attack was planned for. The British intelligence and law enforcement didn't want to. We wanted to keep this operation going to ensure that we rounded everyone up, to make sure we didn't miss any individual in this key network which could have been broader. Um, they have, took it upon themselves to arrest someone overseas, which forced the British law enforcement, uh, enforcement and services into arresting this network early, and the risk being that we didn't uh, identify every key individual. Lee Doddridge, why, what would the use be of sharing the information of what's been happening in Manchester with the US security services? Well, that's a very good question because um, obviously there's only pertinent parts of the investigation and the intelligence that they may want to share. But obviously if we're trying to establish if there's a wider network, mm -hmm. um, by sharing um, certain parts of information, it may well link into what maybe US authorities already have. When we look at um, bomb makers, um, when they put devices together, it's almost like they leave their own individual um, fingerprint on it. They, they all have their own quirky ways of, of designing um, and also using certain materials. So by sharing the intelligence, they may well feed back to us and say, actually, you know, we found a similar device, um, I don't know, maybe in another crime scene in Syria. So we share that because it obviously widens and greatly enhances our chance of finding more information. Frank, um, Donald Trump is in Brussels. I think we can see pictures of him actually um, attending a NATO meeting today. Um, the government has, has made clear Theresa May is going to be having a conversation with Donald Trump. The indications are this leak hasn't come from the White House, though. It's come from U.S. That, intelligence that's correct sources. yeah I mean the White House is effectively traveling with Donald Trump you know that they're, they're with him within his suitcase as it were I mean this has come from the enormous multi-billion dollar US uh, intelligence community and they have 16 different agencies mm -hmm. you know they've got Homeland Security DIA CIA FBI you name it um, so it could be any one of those agencies that has 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 leaked this and you, this, you said that they're leaky I mean why mm -hmm. what would the incentive be in leaking something oh, like these that. are pals they've got pals in the media and there's something called the beltway that goes around Washington uh, it may not have come out of Washington but I think it probably did um, and people have dinner with each other and they're not as cautious as officials are here in the UK um, there is a whole community of sort of part-time spooks or intelligence people in the States who are on contract who've perhaps finished their careers but stay on on contract and they talk to journalists more than people do over here the, the, the reason, quite apart from the present moment, this particular manhunt or bomb hunt, the reason why this is really kind of risky is this is going down a slippery slope because if Greater Manchester Police is, is understandably saying, we don't trust you anymore because you go and, you know, we give you intelligence and you go and splash it all over the, the media, then the US is quite likely to do the same or they could do the same. And Britain needs American intelligence, not on this particular investigation, but the next one coming down the line. To be fair, has it happened the, in the other direction? Have, has there, there been, been a leak here of US yes, intelligence? Yes, there have been. Yes, there have been. I mean, right. where the US intelligence community has expressed their extreme displeasure that something has got out into the media that they have shared. I can't remember what it was, but there was something uh, a few years back. So it works both ways. And remember that US intelligence gathering capacity is many, many times bigger mm -hmm. than any country in the world, including the UK. You know, the NSA, for a start, the National Security Agency, has petabytes of capability to hoover up stuff that Britain couldn't match. So, Ben Owen, how to fix this issue of leakiness? Because it's clearly critical that, that it is fixed. Yeah, it, 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 it is critical, um, as is the threat state at the moment. Um, 
we really need to go back to the drawing board with this. This is happening happening all too often. As Frank said, it worked both ways as well. So we both need to get better at this. Um, what we can't continue doing with the threat we all face today, uh, UK and the US and, and broader, we cannot continue doing this. This information was critical to keep sensitive in the, in the network uh, investigation to identify key individuals. It cannot continue. We need to go back to the drawing board and have some very, very frank conversations um, across the pond and try and get this fixed as soon as possible. Lee Doddridge, what do you think the, the, the wider impact of all of this could be? I think it could be very wide if we don't get a, get a hold on the situation quite quickly. Um, as everyone has said this morning, you know, we, we need to do a, a review on how we share the intelligence but actually how we secure the intelligence once it has been shared. Um, it always has been, you know, for a number of years, it's, it's taken on trust as well, but we do have caveats. Um, and we, we need to go back, as I said, to the drawing board and, and look at how we can move forward from this. So that, and we will have other investigations. And, you know, unfortunately, that is just the case. And we need to just make sure that when we do share intelligence, and we've got to keep doing that, that we, there are more controls around it. Um, ben, I mean, there was uh, earlier in the week, it, we, we heard initially actually from France about some of Abedi's movements, what he'd been up to, the, the, the revelation that he had been off travelling to Syria. So uh, that's an indication of, of where the intelligence, of, you know, how the intelligence sharing is valuable and the impact that it can have. Yeah, ab absolutely correct. Um, Again, as Frank said earlier, the information sharing, intelligence sharing that UK and US have is absolutely crucial. We cannot cut it off. That would be devastating for UK, um, for, for, our, for our interests. We have to keep that flow of intelligence going. It is absolutely key. And a lot of the upstream intelligence, so Syria, Libya and elsewhere, a lot of the volume of that will come from CIA, uh, NSA. So we need to keep this going. We need to be honest with ourselves and agree and accept that the continuation of intelligence sharing has to continue. Um, but as Lee said there, we need to look at the process and how we secure that information when it is shared. I think that is the key here, not the broader intelligence sharing um, scenario. For now, Lee Doddridge, in terms of the investigation, Greater Manchester Police saying they won't share. How do you envisage that proceeding from here? Will all the information just be kept within the force? I think that may be today the um, the way Manchester Police want to move forward. But I think also then um, the wider agencies, um, intelligence services within the UK will probably assist um, Greater Manchester because if they hold too much back, it could actually hinder the inquiry itself. So maybe the, you know, the, the snap decision now to do that. Um, but we do need to look at it and say we need to get these channels open as soon as possible because there may well be a piece of intelligence that the US has that will enable us to make sure we have everybody here in the UK accounted for. Could it already have damaged the investigation? Um, I don't want to speculate at the moment. Um, we, we won't know until the inquiry moves forward. Thank you very much. Lee Doddridge, Ben Owen and Frank Gardner with me in the studio. Now, I, I, I mean, this may come as something as a surprise to, to, to some of you listening, but, but I, I kind of have this slightly knee-jerk patriotism on occasions like this, where I, I think, well, if the British police say that it's bad and the Americans have done it, then the British police must be right, down with the Americans. I, I don't kind of like the idea. Just at knee-jerk level, just at kind of reflex response level, there, there, are two, there are two sides to this story, and I obviously, and perhaps wrongly, that's the point we're moving on to, my initial reaction, like yours, I presume, is to side with, forgive the terminology, but to side with our boys, to side, to side with our boys and girls. It's the British police, the GMP, the Greater Manchester Police Force, who've expressed profound unhappiness about these intelligence leaks, and have, as a result, result of that unhappiness and those leaks, had they have determined not to share any more intelligence with America. Today's not the day to have a long contemplation of this, but my goodness me, we are in danger of becoming a very lonely country, aren't we? If that special relationship with the United States is nowhere near as special as some suggested when Mrs. May held hands with Donald Trump on the White House steps, and of course we have elected democratically to remove ourselves from a union of 28 countries with a common interest, and if, if I mean, so crikey, we're going to be very, very lonely if we're not careful. I hope it's not too late to start uh, building metaphorical bridges. But this intelligence leak in America, 
benefits whom? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Ian Blair on the radio this morning, well, the, the former head of the Met, uh, reminded us that after the July the seventh attacks upon this city, there were similar stories. I, I've tried to find them. It's hard though when, when uh, a terrorist atrocity has happened so recently. You know what it's like on search engines. It, it's hard to go back in time and find the sort of relevant stories that you want because all of the relevant words will, will throw up the most recent stories to contain them, and the most recent stories to contain all of the relevant words are the. Um, Oh, the stories coming out of America today. Uh, uh, it, it could be that the intelligence community is trying to discredit the White House. They're trying to add to the sense that Donald Trump's administration is untrustworthy. But to be honest, I don't think Donald Trump needs any help from the intelligence community in breaching security and breaching convention and leaking information inappropriately. His, his most recent adventure has been a conversation with the president of the Philippines in which he praised the uh, Filipino politician for, for, for killing people without trial, killing uh, suspected drug dealers without trial, and revealed an astonishing aberration. He revealed to the president of the Philippines that he's got two uh, submarines parked just off North Korea. It just like, in, in passing, if you read the transcripts of the conversation, it's quite incredible. So I don't buy the idea that the American intelligence community is somehow trying to, to discredit Trump. I, I, I mean, say what you like about Donald Trump, the one thing he doesn't need any help at all doing is... Uh, is discrediting himself. He does that every time he opens his mouth. Theresa May is furious, we're told. She is set to confront Donald Trump at um, the NATO summit later today. Photographs published in the New York Times show a uh, detonator, it's believed, bomb parts. Eleven more victims have been named today and, and there have, as you know, been further arrests. But I want to draw your attention first to the, uh, to the leaks. And I, I, I mean, I can't really get too picky, can I, on this one, after I've said I don't think anybody really knows the answer. But there's such conflicting interpretations. I just thought we'd have a chat about it and find out what yours is. Give me a call now. You will get through. I, I suspect things today won't be quite as busy as they have been over the last couple of days. Um, so don't hold back if you've failed to get through in the last uh, two shows that we've done together. 03456060973 is the number that you need. How big a deal is it as well? Uh, you may have some insights into that if you work in, um, yeah, for the police or, or something similar. How big a deal is it? I would have thought, just, just try this on for size, because I do understand the journalistic impulse to publish and be damned. That's the great phrase, isn't it? I think it might have been Benjamin Franklin, but someone, someone very clever a long time ago said, publish and be damned. So the job of the journalist is just to get it out there. But since the Edward Snowden story broke, I, I, I've been thinking a lot about the distinction between, if you will, a whistleblower, somebody who does something with a motive, with a national interest in mind. So a lot of the leaks coming out of America, coming out of the CIA, are, it would be pretty easy to conclude. Those leaks are being made by people who are desperately worried about the state of their own nation. They, they, they want the world to know about the collusion between Donald Trump's uh, top team and the Russian government. They, they want that out there, and they, there's now quite a lot of evidence to suggest that, that Donald Trump's team are very, very keen to suppress the truth. So that's a leak of a very different kind. That's Watergate-y. That's kind of saying, look, I have information that I believe the public should know, and you go public with it. It's still a leak. I mean, the word you use to describe it is the same, but it has a motive. There's a thinking behind it. Then I come to the photograph, uh, I think most prominent, on the front page of The Guardian today, showing a, a, a well, it's no nice way of putting this, a blood-splattered bomb part, and that has been leaked by American intelligence, uh, the American intelligence community, to the New York Times and other, other outlets, and I can't see the motivation, I can't see the public interest. Can you? Because there might be one. And, and I think, and it might be unfashionable, it might even be unprofessional for a journalist to think this way, I think the reason why you do something is more important than what you've done in these sort of contexts. So if you believe that the White House is occupied by a man who poses a grave and mortal danger to the democracy and constitution of your country, then you might breach the American equivalent of the Official Secrets Act to get that stuff out there. What's the reasoning behind releasing these pictures? Is it just clicks, to coin a very modern phrase? Can you see any reasoning behind the decision of the American intelligence community to share pictures and information that the British police don't want them to share with their readers and viewers, except the commercial 
results, except the, the, the bums on seats, except the newspaper sales, except the website clicks. At the moment, I can't. And I don't know whether you'll be able to either, but I would invite you this morning to try. 13 minutes after 10 is the time, the number you need if you want to do that. Why? Why do you think this stuff has been leaked? 0345 606 And then try this on for size. Like you, I, I, I garner my insights and opinions on these sort of issues from a curious cocktail of, of reality and fact and then fiction and, and entertainment programmes. But if, you, if we did find this... God, I so nearly swore then. The bomb maker... I think it's been clear pretty much from the outset that the nature of this explosive device made the mockery of any suspicion that it might have been an individual acting alone. Very first coverage I heard, the very first comment I heard on, on Tuesday morning focused on the fact that this was very different from the, from the truck attacks that we've seen in continental Europe, for example. This, this spoke of conspiracy. It was clear from, from, the, from the outset that the nature of the explosive device was such that he almost certainly had help and almost certainly couldn't have built it himself from what we know about him. So that was already out there. We, we already knew that. So if, if we get hold of the bomber, the suspected bomber, if we, if we and frankly, I'd be quite happy to apply the, uh, the thumb screws myself, but... There'll be stuff that at the moment, until this picture was published, only the investigating officers and the bomb maker knew about that bomb. Does that sound silly or naive? I, I genuinely, I, I understand the journalistic impulse to publish and be damned, but up until these photographs were printed, the only people that knew what that bomb part looked like, what that detonator looked like, some self-appointed experts on social media have told me this morning that, that the detonator looks like it would have a military background. That, I shouldn't say self-appointed, I haven't checked their credentials. I don't know, I'm not qualified to comment. But I can't shake this thought that up until the publication of these photographs in the American newspapers, only the bomb maker and the investigating authorities with access to this information would have known what that detonator looked like. And now everybody knows. And I, I began by saying I, 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 this is a morning where I'm not claiming knowledge or insight or anything remotely resembling conviction. But that, that does seem to me to be quite a big deal. Up until the New York Times printed this picture, given to them by the American intelligence community, against the express wishes and to the immense frustration of the British police, the Manchester police, the, the constabulary investigating this atrocity, up until the New York Times published that picture, the only people who would have known what that bomb part looked like were the investigating officers, the agencies, domestic and foreign, with whom they had shared their intelligence, and the people involved in the making of the bomb. I, I think that's a problem, don't you? I'd quite like you to explain to me why it isn't, actually. 0345 606 It's 1016. So it's a, it's a strange conversation today. It's about the leaks to the American media by the intelligence community in America, about which the British intelligence community, in fact, the British Prime Minister and everybody down, are very, very cross about. Um, and there are two schools of thought. The first is that we have very secretive police who, who should be telling us more stuff than they do, and the Americans have kind of led the way. The second is, and I lean more towards this at the moment, the second is that these are just commercial reasons that they publish this stuff for. It's there. Get it out there. Get, get, get the clicks. Get the readers. Get the bums on seats. But the... I think the integrity of the investigation could have been compromised by the publication of pictures that would only have been... A picture of a bomb part that only the bomb maker would have known about. So when you come to interrogate a suspected bomb maker, has that not surely taken away one of your potential weapons? Natasha is in Batley in, in, in West Yorkshire. Natasha, what would you like to say? Um, I agree. I mean, I agree with you. Um, Hang on, I don't even know what I think. You're not allowed to agree with me until I know what I think. <laughs> well, from what, from, from what you've just done, I way more to, to the other side. And it, yeah. it, it, can, it definitely can mess with the integrity of, of an investigation when you, do, when you leak information like that, such as the name of the person that's done it. You know, the, the GMP are working really hard to find the people in connection with it as soon as they can. And they already made an announcement to the, to the general public that they weren't going to announce the name yes. of the attacker until they had some more information on the other people involved. Just, just to speculate, <laughs> you, if you were an associate and, 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 and his name wasn't out there, your level of, of panic, your behaviour is going to be different from how it would be if his name was out there. I, I think it is, anyway, and, and I, I, I'm going to have to repeat myself this morning. We are just speculating. It's not something I often do on the programme, but some events 
demand slightly different treatments. So that makes me uncomfortable, Natasha. Yeah, and they've definitely done it for commercial use, America. I think that completely. I don't think they've done it to, you know, get the information out there to the people. You know. People deserve the information. No, not a chance. Not a chance. They've done it. I mean, CNN were one of the people to report it. I mean, you're going to CNN for your information, then. <laughs> it's, well, there you are. I just think it's, it, oh, no. Some of the stuff that CNN reports. CN, CNN? Are you, are you, are you high? So, I mean, yeah. did you talking about a country where Fox News, some people consider to be a, yeah, yeah, a news yeah, source? So, so, CNN, I mean, it, 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 CNN won't publish anything that's not double sourced <laughs> and double checked. I think we might be going a bit hashtag fake news. 22 minutes after 10 is the time. Uh, looking more at the print media, but the broadcast media, of course, is, is reporting the same stuff. The, the, uh, the identity of the bomber, um, the, uh, the name. The pictures of the of the bomb, some pictures of the aftermath of the attack. I, I, I don't see the the big picture benefit. Sometimes it isn't Occam's razor all about just coming out with the simplest possible answer. It's not really to discredit Donald Trump. It's not really to undermine the British investigation. It's just an intelligence community in America cultivating contacts with American media and giving them something today in the, the quid pro quo in the hope that they'll get the quo back from the quid tomorrow. Maybe. Mike, Cheshun, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Um, I think it's disgusting, obviously, what's happened here, and it's, I think it's the Trump administration have done it from a purely selfish um, view, in that they're, try, they're, just, they're trying to invoke all this extreme policy in their country, and I think releasing these pictures, in their, somehow they think they'll shock the public so much they'll start to come on board. Oh. You know, Gosh, yes, that's a new wrinkle. I hadn't thought of that possibility. I mean, I was looking through the other end of the telescope at people saying it's the intelligence community trying to discredit no. Trump's reputation See, by making the White House look really leaky. No, I don't. I mean, do we even know that? Is you know, the, the security services of America released it. For all we know, we, you know, we know what Trump's administration might have. No, left. because because it, it can only be leaked by people who've got access to it, and the, and the Br British government will know who has been given this information. So they'll have a list of of, of areas whence it could have been leaked. Yeah. But, you know, it's deflection as well. At the moment, he's having a hard time. He's deflecting it at the moment. And also, two weeks' time, he might try again for this radical travel ban or we've got to go now and bomb this country, that country, and innocent people. That's not the answer. Doing it over there is not the answer. But get together over so it just, it just adds to a general environment of, of terror and fear. And hate. Yeah, and hating each other. That's it. The that's it. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that's certainly a theory. I quite like that one, actually. I hadn't thought of it before. Mike, thank you. Everyone's just thinking out loud today, as I'm going to mention a few times in the course of the morning. I, I don't have the, well, I don't know what you'd call it, confidence or arrogance to, 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 to offer a really strong view and then, then bat off people who want to argue with me. So we're doing the show a little bit differently from how we usually do. That, that, that's got some legs. David is in, oh, the finest town in the land. David is in Kidderminster. Good morning, David. What would you like to say? Well, I'd just like to say that um, the Americans have a totally different view on keeping things secret from we do, than we do. We have a pathological need, our officials, to keep things secret. Do we? Yeah, we do. They want to keep everything secret. Well, what, what was Edward Snowden all about, then? Well, Edward Snowden was breaking down the system, wasn't he? But that was in America. He was loads and loads and loads yeah. of secrets. Yeah, but he let them out. Yes, but, uh, but, the, but the American establishment was keeping the secrets. All the the idea that, that they're... Ask. Pardon? Well, let, me get, let, let me move on a bit. Well, all right, let's hope let things get better. The Boston bombing, the marathon bombing. Yes. Uh, you remember that? The chief, of, the chief of police was giving us a blow-by-blow -blow account of what was happening, where these two well, young were, men were... They were looking for suspects. This is a they suicide knew. bombing. They were looking for the two... No, so they, they need the public's bombs. help to find the, the, the yeah, and bombers. Yeah, and they're in Simpson Alley behind these two dustbins. Yeah, this bloke was in pieces on the floor of the concert hall in Manchester. They didn't need the public's yeah, help finding him. It, but it's the principle of the thing that counts, not... No, there's, not no, the there's no comparison yeah. whatsoever. I mean, the idea that America is somehow really transparent, I'm afraid that fell apart like a cheap suit at the mention of WikiLeaks and Edward Snowden. And the parallels between the Boston bombing? I'll tell you what, considering five minutes ago I said I wasn't going to argue with anybody today, David, you've played an absolute blinder by coming, coming on <laughs> with such twaddle. 10.26 is the time. Letting down Kidderminster, David. Very poor show. Peter is in Dulwich. What would you like to say? Hi, James. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more worried about how they got to America. There must be a mole, a leak 
in our side of the organisation. These photos weren't taken by the Americans, they were taken by our own security service. No, we, so share, we share it with, as I understand it, we share the information with, with, with allies, with, with intelligence agencies in other countries for, for various reasons, which we can speculate on, but there's no suggestion, there's no suggestion that the information, the photographs, the images should not have passed from Britain to the American intelligence community. There's no suggestion of that. No one's complaining uh, about that. Manchester okay. police have announced this morning that they're not going to share any more which means prior to that announcement they must have been quite comfortable sharing stuff right yeah i stand corrected on that no we're all we're all working it out together thank you that's all right so once it gets there the, the question is how does it get from the intelligence community to the media and the only answer i've got is is actually just quite banal it's i've done a favor for a journalist so that journalist owes me a favor now there you go 27 after 10 ian is in beaconsfield ian what do you think James, I, I, I suspect that it may be, and I can't say definitely, no, but none it, of us the organisations that released these images felt that there was significant public interest, i.e. they felt like the, the evidence was uh, suspicious, then they may have felt it worth publishing them. And what I'm referring really? to is... Well, for instance, if yeah. it's um, what you might deem as uh, an allied military piece of equipment, meaning, you know, uh, British military or, or American military, there, that in itself raises quite deep questions about, you know, who was behind this. Now, if they felt that this was uh, valid to release for public scrutiny, then that could be the reason. Because ultimately, you know, there's a deep suspicion about our secret services and police, about how they manipulate information about what what stories they give to explain things so maybe they felt well actually this is worth releasing because if the police don't release it nobody's going to be able to think about those options i, I i'm less drawn to that than i was to to the to some of the other suggestions well, just just so you, you're suggesting that the, the 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 bomb parts that have been photographed might mean more to some people than to others of course yeah, and that readers of the new york times read readers of the new york times might therefore be able to help crack the case if they're aware of what the bomb parts look like of course absolutely you know there are uh, there are many many conspiracy theorists who work on stuff like this and come up with alternative explanations apart from the official line and you know in some cases they may be wrong well they're they almost always decided. wrong aren't they well, I disagree because I am one of them. I'm an activist and conspiracy theorist. Oh, so, you know, maybe, maybe the. Do you know, not this week, Ian, mate. Do you mind? Let's wait until they're buried, shall we, before we start doing that? Honestly, it's coming out to half past ten. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. The uh, other question, of course, that's being posed in the aftermath of the tragedy in Manchester on Monday is the question of. Political influence, uh, some fairly vile suggestions from Labour supporters, from some Labour supporters, uh, that the Prime Minister is in some way welcoming this tragedy. It does, uh, whatever the opposite of collateral damage is, collateral benefit, you, you will see more of the Prime Minister. She will be seeking to reassure the country. She will be appearing at the bedsides of some of the survivors. And, and, it, and it could enhance her, for want of a better word, image. But it's all collateral. It's all coincidental. It's all, all accidental. I, I find the suggestion from some that there is a glee involved, a welcoming of this, oh, the timing couldn't have been better. I find that absolutely disgusting. And, and his words you won't hear me say very often. I think UKIP have got it dead right today by, by cracking on with their manifesto launch. Uh, I, I think that it, it doesn't fall to any one politician or any one party to, um, to uh, curtail campaigning. It, it has to be a conscious democratic decision. I think they've made the right decision. But we might talk in the next hour about that the interplay between politicians, politics, and this terrorist atrocity. It's half past ten. Often the case that the answers are a lot more simple than we think. Uh, any mention of the words conspiracy theory have me reaching for a curious combination of the sick bag and the ejector seat. Probably, he says, without a shred of evidence to support this position, probably someone just got paid. So, someone with access to these photographs just got a fat check off a journalist. That's generally how it works. You know, uh, <laughs> that's why it's ended up in the newspapers. That's generally how these things unfold. I mean, a lot of court cases in this country about public officials being paid by journalists to provide them with information. Some of those public officials ending up in jail and, and institutions, everything from the, from the Metropolitan Police through to Sandhurst um, have been caught up in that. 
those investigations. 10.35, you probably haven't heard much about them because, <laughs> because of course, <laughs> the newspapers that were complicit in those crimes <laughs> would be the places ordinarily that you'd turn to to find out <clears throat> reports about the cases. 10.36 is the time. Talking about the intelligence leaks in America, the British government and the British police are furious, but that doesn't mean that they're in the right necessarily. It just seems to me highly, highly unlikely that, that justice is likely to be advanced by putting secret information into the public sphere. I could be wrong, though. Matt's in Doncaster. Matt, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi there. Um, just wanted to um, sort of raise the issue about information that comes out of any source, whether it be American uh, or yeah. British. Um, uh, I go back to the days um, of, of the, um, the role that I used to play um, in, in dealing with munitions uh, in the armed forces, and the detection of munitions. Uh, I was searching Northern Ireland for about five years, actually. Okay. And the point is, I want to raise yes. the issue of um, leave, the, leave the information leaked to one side. It is it, connected to the actual source of the the items that have been photographed. So, if we can just draw your attention to that. Yes. Um, if you look at the, the various equipment that has been photographed and put on, sometimes, and it's just from experience, has happened from time to time. Information like this is get gets put out now. You've also heard of the expression disinformation, haven't you? Of course. So, so bearing that in mind, I'm not suggesting that is something, but w what sometimes happens, information can be released for one source or another to cause a certain reaction. I'm going back now to um, my, my day some years ago. That, yes. that what, what, it, what it does is it sometimes it triggers elements of connectivity of people who were responsible or connected to the development of the item. What we need to understand is not the mule, not the person who detonated it. More often and more importantly is where the place is manufactured, closing that down, and also the person who puts it together. In, in, in my experience, there was, there was only several certain people very specialised. Uh, these were called quartermasters. So but but uh, as things stand, the only people who knew what these components looked like yesterday were the investigating officers, the um, security cleared allies and agencies yeah. with whom the pictures had been shared, and, and the quartermasters. And now everybody yeah, knows. Well, yeah, the, well, you say the quartermasters, again, the quartermasters... I used your word, I, forgive me if I got it wrong, yeah, but yeah, the bomb yeah, makers. Sorry, so, so no, no, you, you no, know, no, the no, only yeah. people that knew what it looked like were the people that made it, and the people that took the pictures, and the people that had the images shared with them because they thought that they could be trusted. Right, there's bomb maker and there's quartermaster. Sorry, sure. it's my no, that's fine, um, but let's not get bogged down. Bomb, bomb maker is the bomb maker, the quartermaster is the provider. So all I'm trying to say is, sometimes, I don't know if it's this, I mean, of course, with, with, the, with the, the type of terrorism we're facing now, we don't know if it's as structured as this. But what I'm trying to say is sometimes information or disinformation, I'll just put it out there to you, uh, can, can cause a reaction somewhere down the chain in here and have a positive effect it could cause a reaction that somehow some intelligence that's lined into that says ah look that's triggered well, then, yeah, then you are an implicitly and I, I don't know whether this is intentional or not you're accusing the investigate the british authorities of incompetence because you, you, you're suggesting this might be a, a a a fruitful tactic that they have categorically and comprehensively rejected and complained about so you're saying that they could be incompetent Naturally, I'm saying quite the opposite. I'm thinking that um, 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 the intelligence services, are, 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 in my opinion, and um, so, so, they, know, so what? They're like, you're accusing them of fibbing, then? They're, t they're saying that they didn't want it out no, there, no, but secretly they I'm, did. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. So, okay. You, you, okay. I wasn't going to go down the line of, of uh, uh, fault or blame or anything of this into this because it doesn't come into it. I'm just no, it doesn't. I'm just trying to understand you better because yeah. do you think okay. the British authorities secretly actually are comfortable with having these pictures out there? No, I don't think they are, possibly. Um, having right. said that, that's if it's in a strain of thought that that's what it's all about. Um, I, I'm, just think, I'm just trying to put it out there. There's no, and that's what, I've invited, that's what I've invited people to do. So, so uh, I, there's absolutely no complaint or criticism from me for not, not having a sort of fully costed manifesto, as it were, when, when you come on air. And the work that you did in Northern Ireland means that you are a million times more qualified to comment on a story such as this than I will ever be, Matt. Thank you very much indeed. Also, I, I, I think the subtext of some of what, what I was hearing there is that you're, you're not comfortable going into too much detail about stuff, the information you may, as a result of your previous role, be party to. Uh, Lavina is in Feltham. What do you think, Lavina? 
Um, James, I have been at the fringe of this uh, since yesterday when I came back from Manchester. I've covered this event myself as well. Um, but in the morning, I've been thinking, you know what, it needs to be out. And the reason, I, I, I do think that Americans have overstepped a step by uh, share, uh, letting out a secret. For yes. example, if two friends have a secret and they let out the secret without the information of the other, letting them know that we are doing it. I understand that. But I think people need to know. People why? Need why? To be why? Because police can't be everywhere, James. If they just can't be living in a time when they have no heart to have killed an eight-year-old, and I have an eight-year-old, and I know what it's. I don't. I don't feel more terrorised when I see a picture of of, of, a, of a bomb no, than I do why. when I see the photograph I'll, I'll of a why. child who's dead. Because people need to be the eyes and ears. Police can't be everywhere. No, There's you've said no that twice now. I'm sorry. I, I, I need to understand you a little bit better. How, how does this make us? How does publishing in the New York Times photographs that the Manchester Police and the British Intelligence Services and the British government don't want published? How does that make us in Britain more vigilant? It makes us more vigilant because we are going to look for people and un unforeseen behaviour. We are going to be more alarmed by it. We are going to see... So, so you are more alarmed as a result of seeing a picture of a bit of a bomb than you were already? No. But, so if you're thinking that they had the... the uh, let me put a question to you. No, to no, 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 no. I asked you a question. You, you just said that we need to be more vigilant. I, I'm no more vigilant now or no more, no more heartbroken as a result of seeing something that the British government doesn't want me to see than I was when I saw the photographs of all the little children who've been killed. I, I, yes. I, with the greatest of respect, Lavina, I think you're talking undiluted gibberish. No, I'm not talking undiluted gibberish. Uh, all right, possibly I diluted gibberish then. Okay, whatever you want to say, but uh, but this uh, but having a detonated bomb picture does not uh, equip anyone to say, oh, we can make a bomb now, because that is really available for everyone. No, to no, know. no, How no, no one, no one suggested it did. I'm just just wondering what purpose is served by it, and I, and I suspect that that is a, a slightly obtuse question, and that, that the truth never will fully emerge. But it probably is as banal as a as a financial transaction. A couple of you suggesting that you're a little embarrassed by the cynicism that's led you to that conclusion. I'd say don't be. I mean, the interplay of the exchange of information for money is at the very, very heart of many branches of journalism. It's possibly a little grubby, but there's many much, much grubbier arms of the profession. 10.43 is the time. Um, I, I, if I misunderstood you then, Lavina, I, I withdraw my accusation of undiluted gibberish, but uh, as it stands, I'm leaving it on the table. Mark's in Nottingham. Mark, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Um First thing, uh, I'm a new listener the last few weeks and uh, a brilliant station. Uh, I'm a, a bit of a Good. avid listener now. Good man, welcome. Um, it won't last. But, but there, <laughs> there's two things I'd like to say. The first thing is that from the days of the, the IRA and, uh, and, and a lot of intelligence services around the world and police services around the world, when a bomb is exploded, the first thing they do is a forensic examination of the scene because yes. they're looking for the, 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 the bomb parts. Because from the bomb parts, they can um, sometimes identify who the bomb maker was because... Yes, you know, there's, there's the signatures. Bomb maker uh, the, 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 signatures. Yes. Yeah, so, so consequently, if you release the information, which, to be perfectly honest, if, if I was the investigating officer, I would be absolutely livid because yeah. it's part of the, the chain of evidence and, and it's part of the things that when you're doing forensic searches of addresses of suspects you're going to be looking for similar items to... So the first items. thing you'll do, if you're the quartermaster or the bomb maker, the first thing you'll do is lose anything that remotely resembles the stuff that's just appeared on the front page of the New York Times. Exactly, because if, if you don't know that the police, the security, security services are aware, you're going to be that little bit more, yeah, they don't know who I am, they don't know where I am, so you, your, your sense of yeah. security is going to be that little bit, bit, bit higher. You're not going to be too, too, too worried. But, but now, A, if, if it was me, and if you've got any common sense, you've got rid of everything. But the other thing as well is the fact that every police officer now who's part of a, an armed response uh, team who's going to be doing an address, the one thing the, the planners are going to be wondering is, are they going to be setting booby traps because they go, their, their, their height of awareness is going to be raised? Are they armed? Are they going to be aware? Of, 
you know, they might know who I am now. So it, do, so it does compromise investigations? It, it compromises investigations. Are you, also, are you, I mean, are you professionally linked in any yes, way? Yes, I have, right. I, I have experience, but I haven't said anything that isn't in the public domain. No, I know, I just, uh, I just, I, I, you know, I just sort of, you, you speak with a sense of authority. I wanted to establish whether yes, or not I was yes, imagining I know, it. I know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, I know for example, also, as, as you speak, a text came in from Paul saying, you're bang on the money. A friend of mine works for the Met, and he is horrified that America have released these pics, and it's a good phrase here. He said, any suspect who they question now will be pre-armed with vital information. Exactly, pre-armed the suspect, but also, uh, or actually have put police officers in danger when they're carrying out raids at addresses looking for the suspect. You know, because, just just because, because, in, in, a, in a nutshell, in a soundbite, if you can, because I'm late for the travel. Why, why, why does it put police officers in danger? Because those, the, the, you know, the, the quartermaster, the people, the people who, who are in charge, are more aware ah, yeah, that of if, they've, yeah. if they've got... Ah, they're not going to try and talk their way out of trouble. They're going to try and shoot their way out of trouble because they know well, what the authorities know. Could, could, could possibly. Yeah, well, the, no, realms of possibly. That, mate, what a call. Thank you, Mark. And, and confirming some of my fears, but of course moving the pendulum back from the banality of, oh, it's no big deal. It probably has happened as a result of a banal financial transaction, but whether it's a big deal or not, whether we should as journalists be going, yeah, always print it, publish it, ah, well, there you hear from someone who clearly knows of what he speaks. So we could be endangering our own officers as a result of this. 10.47 is the time. Some breaking news for you um, in Manchester. Police and army reportedly responding to a call at a college in Hume. Uh, Tom Dunn, LBC's reporter, is at the scene. Tom, what do we know? Well, there's a hive of activity going on, James. I'm just off Chalton Road, which is in Hume, just outside the centre of Manchester. About 20 minutes ago, police cordoned off the area and armed police were telling everyone to get back behind railings and a road just off. And in the last few minutes, a bomb squad has come in and a van has come out and the police have told us to get back. And the words they have just said to us, to everyone here, there's about 40, 50 or so residents watching, saying to take cover. Now, there were reports that the army have come to the college. Those are unconfirmed, but all I can tell you is there's a large block of grey flats. And what I saw was before the cordon came in, the armed police were telling everyone in there to stay in doors. Now, this is a developing situation, and there are uh, maybe 30 or 40 police cars and countless police. I haven't seen any of the army as of yet, but all I know is we're, everyone is spread across this street on City Road. It is. There's, there's a, a workforce next to me who said they saw the police coming about half an hour ago, but that's all I know at the moment. Okay, the police Tom. have told us all to get back. What, what do we know about the college, Tom? Well, I, I'm not entirely sure about the college. I only arrived myself okay. 20 minutes or so ago. I haven't seen a college. All I saw was the block of flats, and I was told they were going into a block of flats. So, unconfirmed, like I said, but keeping a close eye, and I'm staying here for well, be careful. what seems to be the foreseeable future, James. Tom Dunn live at the scene of a, an apparent police raid bomb squad activity at, uh, some reports suggest, a college. Tom, describing what he can see at the scene there in uh, a, a block of flats slightly chilling words there the public being told to take cover rest assured that we will stay very close to that story um, staying in Manchester in about five minutes time I'll cross live to Vincent McAvinney in St Anne's Square as the country prepares to mark a minute's silence in commemoration of the victims of that terrorist atrocity on Monday night at the Manchester Arena you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC and we have been concerned Chiefly this morning, I'm um, just getting a comment from Manchester Police who say that the army is responding to a call at a college in Trafford and roads have been closed. Um, it, is, it, it is the same incident, but obviously, as Tom, I thought, conveyed very um, powerfully, the uh, detail remains unclear because the situation is so live. It's 10.53. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Back to the question of these intelligence leaks. I thought the last caller, um, Mark in Nottingham, I, I, he really seemed very strong to me and it tallies with what a lot of people are texting and tweeting me with some sort of claim to understanding of how these operations unfold. Why, why would these pictures have been published? We don't know. Why is it such a big deal? Should, should the Prime Minister, should the British police, should the uh, Manchester 
constabulary be so upset about it as they seem to be? And, and I would now lean very much towards yes after listening to Mark's explanation of how knowledge, knowledge of what the authorities know is a powerful weapon for the culprits. Uh, Charles is in Sidcup. Charles, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Uh, Hello, good to speak to you. I spoke to you on the day that we found out the name of Lee Rigby. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, so, you know, I've spoke to you many times. This is, a, the, the, I think, there's an insatiable, uh, uh, unbelievable um, ability for a man to do what he does. It's, 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 this is just staggering, isn't it? And what, they, publishing uh, the pictures or, or the... Yes. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was just irresistible for him to do it because there's this link between, the you know, England. After all, this is the land that uh, spawned, uh, wrong words, uh, gave birth to America, if you like. And this is their route, where they come from. And it's sort of saying, look what's happening in, uh, in, in England. If this can happen into England, it's, it's irresistible for them to not do I think, it. I think, I, to be fair, I think they'd have published these pictures wherever the attack had taken place. I don't think it's a, a, a sort of sort of warped interpretation of the special relationship. The journalistic impulse is to publish and be damned. The pictures come across okay. your desk. Am I breaking the law if I publish these? Check with the lawyers. Right, we're going to the presses right now. Whether it was yeah. in France or Germany or, or, or England or uh, anywhere in the kind of first world, as it were. Oh. I hear you. I hear you on that. But the, you know, I was explaining to your researcher about this imagery that human beings are about visual images, the most powerful thing to sort of make us think what we do and do what we do sometimes. And I was thinking about that piece of art. Do you remember the piece of art that was made of uh, Myra Hindley, and it was uh, it was done as the handprints of children. Yes. Um, in the, I mean, we look back to that and you think, how the, you know, how could someone be inspired to make something artistry out of that? And you look back and you look forward and you think, I'm in a different world today. And it could be in future generations that that get, inspires an artist to say, human hands made this. Uh, OK, yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's certainly a view. 10.56 is the time. Tom's in Wandsworth. Bearing in mind, Tom, I'm, I'm going to cross live to Manchester in, in a couple of minutes. So I, I, I may have to cut you off in your prime. What would you like to say? Well, I, I like to say that I'm very surprised that all the blame is being laid entirely at the U.S. intelligence services door. Yes. Uh, there's been a long-standing good relationship dating back to 1947, the U.K.-U.S.A. intelligence agreement, of uh, very close cooperation, and very rarely have there been any serious breaches. I think it's more likely that um, it could actually have come right out of the Trump administration. I mean, they, they're known for leaking things at the moment, uh, as, as we know, and even if it didn't come out of the Trump administration, out of the White House, uh, then surely, as Harry Truman said, with a little sign on his desk in yes. the Oval Office, the buck stops here. The president takes responsibility. The, 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 yes, I mean, it's a great, great image that you... you you share the the the, whiz, the received wisdom in the reporting in Britain this morning is that the um, the country or the prime minister doesn't believe the president is directly responsible. But Theresa May will certainly share her concerns with him at the NATO summit later today. It, it, that's that's the point you're kind of driving at, isn't it? Where does the buck stop? It, well, we don't know if the president was directly responsible, but it's his people. You don't buy the idea that it's just it's creating a climate in which these sort of things are allowed to happen. I don't know that the pictures of the... I don't know, actually. I'll ask you a personal response to this. Just, just the idea that the picture of a blood-spattered bomb part is somehow more chilling or more traumatising than the, just the, the school photographs of some of the children who are now dead. I don't know that these pictures terrorise particularly, do they, Tom? Well, I, I don't think they terrorise, but I think the Trump administration wants to give the impression that it is in charge of the war on terror. Oh, yes. OK. No, I mean, that again, some great calls today. In fact, we've, we've done a pretty wide range, you could um, argue, from the sublime to the sadly rather ridiculous. Tom, you're very much in the former category. Thank you. Uh, we will cross to Manchester in a moment. Vincent will talk us up to the 11 o'clock uh, moment, and at that moment the whole country will hopefully halt for a minute's silence in commemoration of the people killed in Manchester on Monday night. After that, we'll return to these stories and keep a very close eye on that developing situation in Hume, a uh, suburb of Manchester as well. So, Time now to cross live to LBC's Vincent McAvinney. From Global's newsroom, I'm Vincent McAvinney in St Anne's Square, Manchester. Three days on from one of the worst ever terrorist attacks in the UK, this square, this city and the whole country will fall silent in memory of the 22 people killed, the dozens injured and the hundreds of others affected by the atrocity at the Manchester Arena on Monday night. Everyone just started running towards us screaming and crying and 
didn't know what had gone on. It's horrible, scary. For everyone down the stairs, telling them to run, it's horrible. Um, we ran outside, and as we got outside, my daughter started pointing to a group of girls, and they were covered in blood. We believe the attacker was carrying an improvised explosive device, which he detonated, causing this atrocity. ...have turned out here. Flowers have been lain. Candles have been lit. So now we come together for a minute's silence to remember and honour those who lost their lives in the Manchester concert bombing. who lost their lives and were affected in the Manchester concert bombing on Monday. I am